Hey guys, my name is Ryan and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this little hat. Um, my most viewed video is the knit version of this fisherman cap um, and I got a few requests to do a crochet version so that's what this is. I'm pretty proud of how it turned out to be honest. Instead of crocheting it from the bottom to the top, you're actually crocheting it on the side which makes it really easy to make different sizes because you can make it longer by just adding a couple extra chains and you can make it wider by just adding more and more rows. It's very customizable. Um, and I think it turned out really well. I would say it's pretty good for a beginner project because you only have to know a couple stitches, which I do show in the video, but we're using um, a double crochet, a half double crochet, a single crochet, and a slip stitch. And that's all you need to know for the entire project. So if you wanna make this hat with me, just keep on watching. For this project, you're gonna want a thinner, softer, worsted weight yarn and a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. To start off, we're going to make a slip knot, and to make a slip knot, you're going to make a loop. Then you're going to put the string behind the loop and then pull it through, and then you'll have a little slip knot. And then you're going to put that slip knot onto your hook and tighten it. And then you're going to hold the yarn in your hand. And I like to pinch the base when I'm making a chain. It just gives you more leverage and dexterity. And for this project, you're gonna make 46 chains and that gives you 45 stitches. The hat measures at eight inches uncuffed. And if you need to make it longer, all you have to do is add extra chains. I would probably go like five at a time. You can lay your chain against a tape measure. Just be aware that it will shrink a little bit than the actual measurement. So we're going to start off our first row by doing 10 single crochets. Chains can be a little bit tricky to get into, especially for the first row, so don't worry if it's a little tight and finicky. And to do a single crochet, you're going to put your hook in the chain and then you're going to pull up a loop. Then you'll have two loops on your hook and then you go around the yarn one more time, pull through both loops and then do it again and again. And after your 10 single crochet, we're going to do what are called half double crochets. So first you have to wrap the yarn around the hook and then you pull up a loop and you're going to go through all three loops that are on your hook. So it's similar to a single crochet except you're going to wrap the yarn around your hook before you go into the chain. And you're going to want five half double crochet. After your five half double crochet, the rest of your stitches are going to be regular double crochet. So you're going to wrap the yarn around the hook like a half double crochet, except with those three loops, you're going to go through two and then go through two again. And you're going to keep doing that for the entire rest of the row. Once you get to the end of the row, you're going to want to turn around and to do that, you're going to chain two. On the double crochet side, you're going to chain two and then on the opposite side, you're only going to chain once. And now that the first row is done, this is where the ribbing part of the pattern is going to come in. You can see the top of the stitches has two V's. 
you're only going to double crochet into the front loop of the V and you're only going to crochet into the front for the entirety of the pattern. It can be a bit slow and tricky at first to crochet only in the front loops, but it does get easier as you go along and you get used to the pattern. Now that you've done all your double crochets, we've come back to the beginning and we're going to do five half double crochet. And then after that, you're going to crochet five single crochet. And now the last five stitches, instead of being single crochet, they're going to be slip stitches. So you put the hook in and you pull up a loop, but then you pull the front loop through the back loop. It just gives you a very flat stitch. The only thing is they can be very tight and you have to go into them again in the next row. So just make sure that you're making them very loose and pulling at the yarn a little bit. Now remember on this side, you're going to chain up once and then you're gonna turn around and you're gonna do all the things that you just did again. So first you're gonna do five slip stitches, five single crochet, five half double crochet, and then the number of double crochet that you have for your head size. Once I get done with my five half double crochet, 
I like to add a little marker. It's just a little piece of yarn in a contrasting color, just so I know when I'm coming back going the other way where um, to start with the half double crochet because half double crochets and double crochets do look similar and I don't wanna have to count every single time. From here, it's basically up to you. Every single row is exactly the same. Um, and you basically just keep going until the hat measures the desired size. You can hold it up to your own head, or if you're making it for someone else, you can take a tape measure and measure it out. Now that I've done a couple rows, you can start to see the shape that it makes. Um, the gradual slope from the tallest being the double crochet to the shortest being the slip stitches and it gives you a nice triangle shape. Where I've left my stitch marker on the other side I know is what's going to be my last double crochet and then after that stitch I can switch to half double crochet. Here you can see the texture of the crochet rib and this is why you have to crochet in the front loop to give you these nice ridges. After a while, it'll start looking a bit like a Coke bottle and the top will start slowly curving inwards, which is what you want. This is what the hat looks like once it's around 3 fourths done. You can see that it's very curved now towards the top of the hat, as it should be, but obviously it wasn't big enough yet, so I kept going. It's important that you end your last row at the top of the hat because you're going to use that strand of yarn to sew the top of the hat closed. So you just make one chain and then you cut the yarn, leave yourself enough yarn to do the sewing that you need to do, and then just pull it out. Next, I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle and start sewing this opening closed. So I'm doing it sort of like a drawstring bag. I'm just gonna do a running stitch all around the circle and I'm gonna pull it tight as I go to close the top of the hat. Once you tighten it, you're gonna go around that same area a couple more times just to make sure everything's super secure. And then you're going to poke the needle to the inside of the hat so that we can weave in the end.
The next thing to do is to close this side seam. You can either choose to sew it close or I actually decided to crochet it closed just because I thought that that would be a little bit easier. It does leave a ridge when you cuff it, so if you want less of a notable ridge, you could just sew it closed, but I thought it would give it a nicer, tighter look. All you have to do to crochet this seam closed is to go through a stitch on either side of the seam and then just take your yarn. You don't have to make a knot or anything, just pull up a loop and then just start immediately single crocheting the two sides together. After sewing up your side seam, the last thing you need to do on this project is to sew in your ends. I don't usually take too much time to sew in my ends. All you have to do is thread a tapestry needle and then you sort of go up and down on the back side, of course. You go up and down into some stitches and it's good to cross over stitches more than once so that they'll be super secure. You just wanna do it long enough so that the stitches aren't going to come undone and then you can clip the end. And finally, this is the finished hat, all complete and cuffed. You can see what I mean about the single crochet ridge at the back, but I didn't really mind it, to be honest. Um, one thing I did wanna note is that with crochet, it is not as stretchy as knitting, so you have to make it a little bit bigger than your head. I usually wear a 20 inch hat, and this was around 24 inches, I believe. You can see it when I compare these two hats that the crochet one is definitely a little bigger. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if there's anything else that you wanna see from me, please leave it below in the comments because I really do read every single comment and I do take suggestions sometimes if I do feel inclined. So thank you for leaving me any comments down below. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you wanna see my face again and you wanna see cool projects. So yeah, okay, bye.